Uh, sorry about that. Uh, I think we worked it out there. So my name is Ivan Casanova. Uh, I run marketing and product here at Jibe. Um, I am really passionate about helping organizations, especially large enterprise organizations, understand how they can leverage new technology. Um, uh, I tweet a lot at my handle on Twitter, which is It's Me Ivan. Uh, the topics are HR technology, if that's something that you're interested in. Uh, there's always a pretty good conversation going on uh, uh, on Twitter about this. And, um, you know, a little bit later on, we're going to have, you know, one of the most, you know, kind of the most famous folks in the industry, uh, Doug Berg, who's the CEO of a company called TrackF, um, who is our partner on Job Alerts, which is the topic of today's presentation. I'm going to do a little bit of a setup first and, and to tee up Doug, uh, but, and I'll do a formal introduction when we, when we get to that part of the presentation. So, uh, you know, Job Alerts, which is the topic today, is a really important part of the Job Candidate Experience Platform. And uh, I just wanted to maybe put into context and, and frame for everybody uh, who, who attended today, you know, how important the folks here at Job and, and our clients really think about the whole notion of candidate experience and why it's so important um, and how Job Alerts can actually be a really big part of that. Uh, you know, our, our base level thinking, though, is, is pretty much that the world that we live in um, is, you know, based on these amazing and powerful um, online experiences. You know, and we, we kind of take them for granted, right? Uh, the ability to find any piece of information that we ever would dream of. Uh, the other day I tapped my watch and an Uber car showed up in my office building here in New York City and took me to my meeting. Um, you know, the, our ability to buy things or share information on social networking. You know, they're all really amazing user experiences, but the, the point that I like to make to folks when we think about these user experiences is how much technology is actually abstracted away from the user through these amazing user experiences. You know, uh, uh, folks who know me probably are sick of me saying things like, the folks at Google had to invent a way to look at data so they could actually present search results in a really timely manner. And this notion of beautiful, powerful, simple online experiences that abstracts all the technology away from the user is really the opposite of the way that most career sites, specifically applicant tracking system based career sites operate. You know, like one of the most profoundly challenging aspects of applicant tracking systems is the whole idea that they make you as a user, as a candidate, try to parse the language and the technology of the applicant tracking system. Um, and they use the words, they use the navigational system of the applicant tracking system, and it, it isn't the same as tapping your watch or tapping your phone and having an Uber car come pick you up or being able to type into a search box and finding any piece of information that you want. And that user experience is so important because, you know, we, we have seen a fundamental shift in the way that candidates, especially those kind of, you know, best candidates, those purple squirrels that are out there, you have to excuse the obvious pun here, but the, you know, this candidate in this picture represents a design point that the folks at Jive work really hard to try to capture the attention of. So, you know, uh, he's woken up in the morning, he's on his way to work, he's having his breakfast, he may have gotten a potentially bad email from his boss or something that disturbed him and spurred the thinking that, hey, I need to go and look around for something else for myself because I'm now going to think like that. and. You know, he's going to make up his mind about your company way before he ever talks to anybody in your company. He's going to go to your career site. He's going to search around for jobs. He's going to look at job descriptions. He's going to do all these things without you ever really knowing, you know, who he is or what he's about. And, you know, we, we talk about this moment of truth, right, this window of opportunity to convert that purple squirrel, right, that perfect candidate, right? Um, Maybe you're out at the park on a weekend and you have to do some work because your boss assigned you some task on a late on a Friday and you realize that that's the last straw for you and you're going to take out your mobile phone 
because you don't want to search for a job on your laptop that the company monitors. You're going to take out your mobile phone and look around for something. And again, there's a very small window to capture this person's interest, right? And this whole idea of converting clients who visit a career site and making that a self-service function and addressing the candidate who has never spoken to a recruiter in your organization is the foundational thinking that we built the Jive Candidate Experience platform on, right? Our mission, our promise to our clients is that we provide a consumer-level user experience every single time a candidate interacts with your brand online, right? And if you do that, you'll convert more candidates, right? You'll have more candidates, you'll have a wider choice, you'll make better hires, you'll have low, higher retention and lower turnover, and all the great economics associated with that. But it all starts with a really positive candidate, candidate experience and, a, and a, what we call a consumer level candidate experience for every single user. And our platform is built and mapped to something that we're calling the new candidate journey. And I think that the new candidate journey represents the, the preferred path for job candidates today, right? The first thing that they're gonna do is they're gonna go out on Google and they're gonna search for either jobs in a specific location, jobs in a, for a specific company, or jobs in a specific role, right? And we built our platform so that that first step can be optimized by you, our clients. So we give you the technology to optimize landing pages and links for popular search engines. And when you do well in organic search on search engines, we give you the ability in our platform to have content-rich landing pages. Those content -like landing pages are not generic. They are specific to a particular job, a particular city, a location, role in the organization, so that that candidate who might be eating their breakfast in the morning or might be in the park on their mobile phone has an opportunity to understand who your company is. And then they have the ability to use a really consumer-oriented on-site search capability. So they can search through all the jobs and find the job potentially that they may be interested in. But really, and really this is the kind of the, the, the fundamental focus of today's presentation is that first interaction, that first time that that candidate is going to identify himself is no longer only limited to an apply function. For a generation, the model had been job board advertising, link to an apply flow, that's how we captured a candidate, that's what we meant was the top of the, of the funnel. Really, recruiting has now adopted a much more digital marketing centric perspective where capturing some simple, easy to share identifier like an email address becomes the beginning of what we see as a nurture phase in the relationship between the candidate and the employer. And that nurture phase is what we're going to really kind of deep dive into today during our presentation, right? So it could be in the form of job alerts, could be in the form of just joining a talent network where you share even more information. And through that nurture cycle, where you learn more about the organization and you understand the jobs that are available in that organization and you have that one-to-one -one nurture relationship with the organization that's been customized to you, that's where an application process will happen. And you know, the, the capabilities that we have integrated into our platform, right, are so simple for the user and they really do. Our objective here is to link back to those simple but powerful online user experiences which abstracts all the technology and allows the user to achieve something meaningful and powerful with a really simple user experience. 
So I search for a job on a career site, I can get job alerts about all those jobs in that location. And it's as simple as just sharing my email address. If I do find a job description, find myself on a job description page, again, I can get alerted to future jobs that look like this job because now I've started to designate some of my preferences around what kind of jobs I would be interested in, right? But it isn't about going through a seven, eight, 14 minute apply flow. It's about I am ready as a candidate to enter into a nurturing relationship with you as an employer. And I think it's such a profound topic, um, you know, and the, you know, the fundamental thing that we're going to talk about for the rest of this presentation, um, and, I, and I, I, I bet Doug is maybe upset because I'm stealing a little bit of his thunder, but perfect alignment between you as an employer and the perfect candidate for the openings that are hardest for you to fill are never always in alignment, okay? Candidate may not be ready today. He may be just passive in his, in his job search. We all do window shopping online. Do we still call it window shopping if we do it online? Uh, you may not have your resume ready. You may not, you, you may not be just have the information at, at your disposal. You may not have the time, right? The employee may not be ready. You may not have jobs that are specific to that particular candidate's needs on that day or in a specific location. Or it may be really hard for them to apply for jobs because you have assessments and you've got a 30-minute apply flow or your apply flow doesn't work on mobile or whatever the reason might be, right? But that alignment between candidate and employer has not been achieved. And when that doesn't happen, if you haven't entered into a nurture relationship with that client, then that candidate is gone forever. Maybe to the other company in the town that you're trying to hire in or to the other company in your city that is your competitor. So we went out. We partnered with a company called Trackif. I'm gonna really happy to introduce Doug. Um, and I, I think it's somebody that many of you already know. And I'll let Doug uh, jump in and give his own bio, but we're, we're really happy that Doug was able to join us today and add his wealth of experience into um, why job alerts are such an important part of today's uh, recruiting landscape. Well, great, Ivan. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, we couldn't be more excited about partnering with Jibe, um, uh, who I believe is really one of the great leading companies relative to recruitment marketing platforms uh, in the marketplace that has proven to be scalable and supporting some of the newest uh, trends that are happening online. Um, since I left Jobs to Web back in 2012, uh, after we were acquired by Success Factors, you know, one of the things we saw that single-handedly was the biggest uh, thing that impacted recruiting was what we called our talent community. And really, at the end of the day, the talent community was this acquisition of interested talent, pre-apply talent, and how we ought, not only captured that interest, but automated the engagement that happened between our career site, our recruiters, and those people that were interested in our site on days when they were looking for opportunities so that when we were ready to uh, hire those types of individuals, we could instantly know that our system was reaching out to those folks to multiply and pull forward all of the historical interest. And so that's really what we've done with TrackIF. We, we saw how powerfully it worked within the recruiting world, and frankly, we took TrackIF as a, an intelligent alerting platform, and we've been deploying this on major shopping sites, such as Home Depot, uh, when you find items you want to buy and you want to get alerted when they go on sale, or if there's out-of-stock items and you want to get alerted when they're back in stock, or even if you want to create personalized shopping alerts on sites like Neiman Marcus. This this is really the technology that's helping uh, consumers and candidates to curate the part and content of the web that they decide comes to them and when. 
And so as we look at the challenge recruiters have, which is same, the same problems as what uh, retailers have online, is that 99% or a huge percentage of people that stop at your career sites on any day don't take action. They don't leave their business card. They don't apply for jobs. And like Ivan had said earlier, right, you're spending all of this money up top between job boards and LinkedIn subscriptions and sourcing tools and even referral marketing programs and other things you're doing to get people to come and, and get the fish up to the lure of who your company is. But unless you can get, uh, you know, hooks that allow them to show their interest in, in your company early and often, as it says inside of the, the webinar today, you know, you're going to miss out on hiring a lot of folks. And one of the things that's very interesting, um, just like Ivan said earlier, one of the single biggest sources of applies was the job alerting technology as it had been online after 10, 12 months or maybe even two years with our customers. And a big part of that is even if candidates aren't looking, they're still receiving these job alerts that match them. And we found that a huge amount of candidates store these emails inside of their email boxes, almost like bookmarking on the web goes. And so on the day that they go to decide to search for a job, uh, because either their review didn't turn out, their project got canceled, whatever it might be, you don't have to live and die by where you're at in Google that day when they start searching because you've been drip marketing to those people that there's been jobs of interest to them over time and they just happen to have your email or your most recent email sitting in a folder from your job alerting system that brings them back to your site. And so it's really important as you get this online uh, to understand the impact and role it plays as a part of your overall recruiting strategy and making it just pop my email in simple for people to do this. Um, we do this type of just pop in your email um, and get alerts capability on our site. And if you look at all of the best practice sites like indeed.com, careerbuilder.com, they all have it this easy on their site. Uh, they do not require people to join, register, set up a profile, all of the kinds of things that you would see on a traditional enterprise grade site because that's not the simplicity that you want. And by doing it this way, you get four to five times greater acquisition and conversion of people that will participate with this capability on your site. And it not only has to be in your search results, it has to be on your job pages, it can be on any of your branded recruiting pages that you have and this simply based on their search results saves the agent and starts to tee them up to receive those alerts online. Go ahead to the next slide. The other thing that's really important is that as you're sending these alerts, right, they can't look like 1990s system generated types text message alerts. We know that you've poured a ton of investment into your branding. And so we've really built our alerting system not only to intelligently match exactly the new job opportunities that align with that candidate's interest and are really relevant to them, it also allows you to bring to them the full branding capability that you would want for any job opportunity, which might include link back, links back to your strategic areas, all of your creative uh, brand and style sheet information, but also the ability for them to instantly either unsubscribe or get redirected to any of the other areas of your career site, because that branding touch point can be so important when it's go time for a candidate. So when you think about the simplicity by which you can plant this in, if you want to go to the next slide here, I won't talk through all of how this is different than maybe some of the ATS platforms that you're on, other than to say that for most ATS systems, this stuff is hidden, it's, you know, three clicks away from most of the search results. It requires typically a full registration, which your candidate might see as a full apply instead of just this easy pickup type of opportunity. Um, it's also not portable, so you can't go put it on some of your career landing pages, your college recruiting pages, uh, your diversity pages, so that you can literally make this something that can, can be opted into uh, even on assets that aren't a part of your career site. But then 
the other big thing is most ATS systems make these candidate-only types of uh, applications. So your recruiter can't be on the phone with a candidate and say, geez, I really like your background. I know it's not the right time for you, but could I sign you up so that you can hear about job opportunities? And probably nobody is better at building a search for a candidate once they've talked to them than your recruiters on your career site. And it takes them two seconds to, to say, hey, I've got a project manager who specializes in a certain uh, expertise in a certain location. And now I, as a recruiter, don't want to have to just put that into a CRM that relies on me to then think about who I talked to a month ago or two months ago that might be a good fit for a job. The asset of that interaction is now saved in an automated system that takes over that touch point relationship with that candidate and keeps pinging them and bringing them forward with opportunities so that when they ultimately do apply for an opportunity, even if the recruiter leaves your company, uh, you know, the asset of that relationship is, is held within your system. So all of these things are really important things that can make the difference between whether you get a 1% lift in what the role of alerting can be in your system and a 40% lift in hiring activity over time. Now the beauty of what happens on the back end is as you aggregate all of these relationships, they get summarized within the back end dashboard in such a way that you can start seeing your talent pipelines build out based on categories of jobs or titles of job opportunities. So you can not only see the volume of people lining up behind different types of positions, but also the level of match activity and clickback activity that happens within your site. So once you get all of this rolling, you know, you start to get macro level and business level results like we saw with some of our major employers that happened out on the network. And so, you know, we took one of our major U.S. retailers who was spending almost $30 per applicant uh, prior to putting job alerting and opt-in out to after 18 months, it went down to $0.05 cents per applicant. Uh, and they had over 5 million people. It was about seven to 10,000 candidates per day that were signing up to hear about job alerts in their system, which is job board level uh, acquisition just because they made this feature available on their career site. Uh, we also had another customer, Lifetime Fitness, who instantly switched over to the Jive platform from the Jobs to Web platform, who attributed 40% of their hires from last year alone from their job alerting capability. And now using the Jive platform in conjunction with TrackIF are achieving the same or better levels of uh, applicant flow and hiring activity as well. Now the other impact that this makes in your hiring community is something we saw happen with Deluxe Corporation where they were able to cut the delivery time of qualified candidates in half, right, by two weeks, where it used to take them four weeks from the time they posted positions to being able to deliver qualified candidates to two weeks or less, uh, which delighted the heck out of the uh, hiring manager community online. And for you science uh, geeks out there, I like to say, uh, you know, you can literally look at the lift effect that alerting has by extending all of your recruiting investments. And what we saw when we analyzed the lift and the increased application rate by job category, we didn't show you everything in here, but we were able to see that in so many categories, if people didn't apply on the first day they visited your site but signed up for alerts, we were able to see in within 30 days of their first time they applied an additional 40% of applicant events within the first 30 days and an additional 25% of applicant events that happened after 30 days. And so think about the yield that this could have tremendously on your site. And for you branding related folks that really want to make sure that as you're investing dollars to drive people to your employer brand or your career site, you'll actually see the long-term effect that this has across all of your different investments. And so this was a, a real picture of a career site that we worked with for a pretty large brand that was getting in the beginning of January 2010 around 50,000 visitors to their career site. But now that is people were coming in from job boards, 
from niche boards, from job aggregators, from all of their online advertising, from their social networks, as those people were coming in and signing up for alerts, and the alerting system was serving as the follow-up, the retargeting, the hey, come back, there's another job for you type of entity, you can see over time it literally multiplied the recruiting effectiveness of all of the places you're investing in driving new people to your site by recycling them and bringing them back to the point where, you know, within just about a year and a half, we were literally now getting 10 times more traffic to the career site over time because of having alerting within the system. So. As far as results that this single entity can have within your recruiting program, you know, having this online not only captures candidate interest early and keeps that ongoing touch happen, but it really incre increases the apply rates per candidate. We saw in so many of our large companies, I think a lot of us as recruiters go, oh, this is going to increase the number of bad applicants I have. Well, you should have technologies in place that can help you to literally sift through that stuff very quickly. And if your ATS doesn't help you to do that, you might not have the right ATS. But why would you be prohibitive uh, in your uh, application area to say, I, I want more apply events even from my good people as well? And so many candidates in their mind, when you think of it from their perspective, we saw the average apply rate of candidates was only like 1 or 1 1.2 on average over millions of candidates. And the thinking or psychology of the candidate is, I applied for one job at the company, I'm going to wait and see how that goes. And as most of us know, especially with hundreds of recruiters in larger companies, that limits so dramatically the opportunity to hire a specific candidate when they have that mindset. And even if they got rejected for that job, maybe because not even they weren't a good fit, it's just that they applied late, someone else got the job, they got a rejection email that was automated, they felt like they weren't wanted, and unless they get this magic email that shows up, eight days or 10 days later saying, hey, we saw you had applied to this job, but here's another one just like it, please come back and apply again, you completely lose a huge population of qualified applicants for future jobs. Obviously, this decreases tremendously your cost per applicant and hire, gets you those faster results to get better qualified applicants to your managers. It substantially multiplies your recruiter sourcing results. We had one of our customers at jobs to web who had all 300 of their sourcing people literally contributing hundreds of conversations per day to their job alerting technology, whether that be conversations on LinkedIn or through just direct sourcing or through referral activity that was happening, every single touch point would get put into their job alerting system because that asset of those relationships and those automated pings that happened to the recruiters and those candidates was such a huge asset that prior to this might be going into a CRM, but a CRM that was static latent and didn't act upon, you know, automated events that could happen online. And so obviously uh, the biggest uh, goal here is to decrease your dependency on job boards and firms over time. Um, our back-end dashboards that we work in conjunction with Jibe show you the growth of all of the people that are your members, the number of jobs they're tracking, the number of matches that are happening, the click-back activity, and you can even drill directly into specific candidates and the types of job opportunities they're searching for. Um, so if you go to the next slide, Ivan, um, you know, you guys can literally see how you would be able to search. So let's say you've got a recruiting project and you don't want to put that job out on the public site yet. It might be a replacement type of a recruiting gig, but you want to be able to go to your uh, talent pool of intent candidates here, do a search for everyone that's watching a particular type of job, and then start doing outreach to those positions. You can definitely get access to those individuals through the back end dashboard as people are subscribing to your talent community. And you can even see if you drill into uh, the next slide here exactly what alerts every single individual has received so that as you engage in conversations with them, you can say, hey, I know you got a job alert you know, last week or a month ago, uh, click on that position or I can resend it to you and uh, let's have a conversation or get things started. So a really great way to not only let the engine run automatically and drive 
better yields of candidates for you, but even a great sourcing pool and sourcing application that allows you to go in and do rifle shot recruiting on the back end as well. So hopefully this has made great sense to all of you relative to the role this plays in recruiting. We couldn't be more excited to be powering this for Jibe, and we would love to have your site have this kind of weapon of recruiting as you go forward in your recruiting. So I think now we're going to do some Q&A, if I'm right, Ivan, if you guys want to open it up for that. Yeah, so Doug, um, first off, I really want to thank you. That was really great. Um, uh, I'm going to take a couple of just logistics questions that folks had sent in. Um, and so yes, uh, for folks who asked about the slides and the recording, in the next 24 hours, you're going to get a link to this presentation, and you'll be able to um, hear this presentation again, you'll be able to forward that on to other people in your organization. Uh, included in that email follow-up that you're going to get uh, will be a link to uh, a really interesting um, ebook that we've written specifically on this topic uh, around job alerts uh, and the role of job alerts in modern recruitment marketing strategy. Um, a lot of the facts and figures and the concepts that we've talked about during this presentation are now documented in the ebook, and it's a really good way for you folks who, who attended today to get other folks in your organizations interested and excited about some of these topics. Um, so, uh, so Doug, I, you know, kind of with your history, maybe I'll tee up a couple of these questions for you, and, and maybe you can talk about it. Uh, you know, um, a lot of times uh, outbound emails, right, uh, are categorized whether by spam filters or by other kind of enterprise corporate um, security filters that, that, um, that is, was there ever any challenges with kind of being categorized as spam? Does that ever happen? Is that something that people should be worried about? Yep, so the spam related issues have, it's a multi-headed monster, right? The first thing is um, making sure that candidates have specific opt-in capabilities that are compatible with the CAN spam acts. And all of the systems that we've developed firmly comply with that, even to the point where if you're recruiting in Canada, they have a much more stringent, uh, almost triple verification model, which we support as a part of candidate opt-in processes. But assuming that candidates opt-in for these transactional emails, they're 100% compliant, and especially because we offer a one-click unsubscribe capability, we meet the requirements for CAN Spam Act uh, issues everywhere. Now the other thing is, as we're delivering emails over time, we uh, and our team, as we build your templates that send out your job content, have specific tools where we test the content of your emails through our spam testing methodologies to make sure that none of the keywords inside of there would be just glaring keywords that would get you into either the promotional tab on Google or get you into spam filter issues uh, that would happen online. So by doing these few steps of making sure you're compliant with the CAM Spam Act as well as making sure that your email content uh, it doesn't contain any uh, information that would be easily seen as spam information, uh, we've completely had almost zero spam related issues over time. Um, and, but by the way, one of the things, uh, Ivan, that we do, if a recruiter ever does uh, subscribe on behalf of a candidate uh, for some signing up, they do receive a welcome to uh, our career site and our job alerting system email and it does say specifically inside of there, if you didn't intend to receive these or if you decide you don't want to receive these, click once to turn it off. And that's a way we solve the problem for the recruiter subscribed uh, candidates. Yeah, so Doug, that's the next question that, that came in, which was around um, candidate either enters into an interview cycle or gets hired or finds another job somewhere else and, and doesn't want to get these emails. What are the mechanisms for him to stop getting those emails? It's a very simple thing. On every single job alert, there is a very specific link that can be as glaring or as um, uh, small as you would like it to be that says, we don't want to receive this anymore. Now, the other thing that the TrackIF system has is your ability to set up automatic unsubscribe rules. So, for example, 
if you say, look, we only want to allow people to set up maybe three or four of these alert agents on our system, we can throttle or govern candidate usage from those. But let's also say you only want people to receive job alerts uh, for the six month time frame from the time that they go out there. And we don't have to automatically unsubscribe them, but what we can do is send out an alert to the candidate saying, hey, it's been six months, we've been watching for you, and uh, uh, if you want to extend, you know, your watch alert for another six months, please click here. So there's a lot of different ways that we can deploy intelligent relationship management techniques that really help you um, to, to manage those things. The other thing we're working towards in the future is a connection between your Jibe recruiting activity and the people that are setting up alerts. So for example, if we get somebody that's a high applier and they're applying for every job in the system, but we're never getting them through interview or a substantive type of a recruiting activity, or even if they reach a do not contact or do not alert capability, you can either log in immediately to the TrackF system and turn that person off, or we'll build an automated way to manage that somebody has not ever clicked back to the site, or if they're in, uh, we don't want them to hear about future jobs type of trigger that we would receive, we could also manage the relationship to try to mitigate the amount of unqualified subscribes in the future. Yeah, uh, that was actually one of the questions that we had, Doug, which was, how, how can I get this integrated with my CRM capabilities? And, you know, for, for, for Jive cl clients, that's actually part of what we do. So uh, we can auto-register clients in the CRM so that you can do other types of outbound content marketing to those candidates. You can send them um, emails, not just about specific jobs, but also about what life at the company would be like, corporate information, or, or even category-based information, et cetera. So um, that's something that, that we're doing and we're working with the, with, with the folks at TrackIt. The, um, Doug, one of the questions that we got around is how customized can the email be um, on the outbound channel? So what's, what are the options there for clients? You have almost an unlimited design capability for the templates that we would use to send out the job criteria. The only thing we don't have right now is a way to change dynamically the job look by perhaps a different job category. So in other words, we can't infuse the YouTube video of an employee testimonial for an engineer if the job might contain engineering types of content. That's always been a dream or a vision of mine to be able to do something like that, but right now we don't have the capacity to do that. However, uh, we can design these emails in such a powerful way so again it doesn't just look like a bullet point list of job title only types of pieces of information. Uh, you saw in the lifetime fitness example we used much more of like a tile or menu type of an approach and we can include almost any data point within your job content to include within those outbound emails. So things like the location, the job posted date, uh, the full title, any of the content that's on your job descriptions are things that we can also include inside of the outbound job alerting email. Yeah. Um, so Doug, the last question that we got was one that I'm going to try to maybe answer and if you want to add something to it, uh, which is, um, you know, how do I actually go about doing this? What does it take to actually implement this on my career site? And so, uh, you know, from, from a job perspective, um, the TrackGift technology uh, has been integrated into the job candidate experience platform. You do require the base level of platform um, to be implemented uh, for you to seamlessly insert uh, job alerts. So uh, for us, that means ATS integration um, and some control over job search and job descriptions. Um, and so that's out of the box what we do once we have integrated to your applicant tracking system and we've set up our job service. Um, we have control of all of the jobs. And then when we present those jobs either in a job description page, a job search page, a category landing page, um, even some of the header, footer places that appear on all the other kinds of pages on the site, you know, we have the ability now for you to integrate those um, job alert links in different places across the career site. Uh, a lot of the clients that we work with look at different placements and, and different strategies for integrating some of the, um, those links to figure out what some of the best ones are. But Doug, is there any other experiences that you have from the past maybe to answer that about kind of how that works? 
Now we love how simple it is. It's literally an on-off switch in terms of how we turn this on. So there is not a large like integration or anything that needs to happen. It mostly comes down to how you want the candidates to view it on the search results pages, the jobs pages, maybe even at apply, offering the opt-in capability. And then most of the work is how we design those email templates. And our team would work with you to take your whatever design you want and turn it into the reality of how your outbound job alerts would look on the site any campaign coding, uh, analytics type of information you want integrated into the return path links that you would have so you can get full visibility of this activity into your Jive analytics platform. And lastly, the thing I'll say is just like your Jive platform is mobile ready, we guarantee that all of these job alerts, because 80% of people will open these alerts on their mobile devices, are completely responsive, compatible with any of the mobile devices. And so you can be assured that as candidates are receiving these, that they're going to really render perfectly within those mobile handsets. Yeah, you know how much we love um, candidate experience on mobile, Doug. It's in our DNA. So. Um, so, uh, folks, that's all the questions that we've gotten. Um, I want to thank you for sending in all those questions. They were really great. Uh, again, you're going to get a link in the next 24 hours where you can uh, re-listen to the whole presentation. Um, I, Doug, I really want to thank you. Uh, I thought that was a really informative and educational session uh, for all the folks who, uh, who tuned in today. And I want to thank you very much for spending time in your busy schedule to be with us today and, and to help out the, the folks here who showed up on the phone. My, my pleasure, Ivan. Uh, thanks, everybody. Enjoy the summer. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Ivan, or you can ping me on LinkedIn, and I'm happy to answer any questions as well. Great. Thanks, Doug. Thanks, everybody, for showing up today.